Uh, yay! We're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Tea for Two today with the legend himself, Wayne Salento. We are like a little giddy with excitement and nerves um, about yeah. this interview. Um, so I'm Alexis Kara, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm Chrissy Whitehead. And we're Broadway Arts Community. And we started this in 2017 because we, over the years of performing, in Broadway shows and TV and film, we've always been passionate educators and teachers, not only um, throughout our careers, but also how we have learned from our teachers and the importance of passing on legacies and mentorship. And so we started Broadway Arts Community to, to pass on all this stuff that we've learned from our teachers, from people like Wayne, um, and what we continue to learn. Um, and uh, yeah, and Chrissy's gonna tell you a little bit about what we do. Yeah, yeah. So um, because we have had a career not only as a dancer, but we've also had a career as a singer, as an actress on film and television in guest stars, recurring Alexis was a series regular, as well as Broadway shows such as Wicked, which we're going to talk about today, and um, and of course, Line. So we take all this knowledge that we've been doing for 20 years and um, share our community, but also teach a mentorship program, which is like a monthly tailored to you, what do you wanna learn from us? Um, which is active for camera dance or musical theater. Uh, we also do private coaching and we also do right now, we're offering a four week session of classes online um, that are more affordable than the mentorship. So um, check us out at www.broadwayartscommunity.com. But today we are doing these T for two, and two, fifty. <laughs> oh, maybe Wayne will tell us a little bit about that audition process with Fosse. So we have a little. Um, we're going to show you about a two-minute clip of Wayne's work um, as we bring him in before we get started. Uh -huh, Tyler's here. Yay, Tyler! Yay, Tyler. Oh, our power. Tyler's watching. I'm never satisfied with what I do, and I do take risks, and I um, and I don't play it safe, and. When I start playing it safe, that's when I'm gonna go garden somewhere and just be a gardener. <laughs> is this, I think this is American Dance Machine, is what I'm thinking, but I'm gonna ask Wayne. We're just showing a little bit. You can tell a story through dances, because dancers do act. They do continue the storyline, they progress the story without getting into very heavy book scenes. System is locked. They got me trapped. My name's here, but this ain't me. Put together to all my trap. Keep your hands on your cat and your boy watch your back. He said to catch in the alley. I tell you, mess in the back, set the best to the help you. Scream in the middle of it. See it Holler if you hear me. I feel dancers have to be brilliant actors. And if they know what the situation is, and they know what's expected of them, and they know what's going on, then their bodies will take over, and they have to tell the story. Michael Bennett and Bob Fosse, I think, were the strongest influences on me. Michael Bennett was a genius with choreographing the whole stage, just moving it around and making the whole thing dance. The other extreme was Bob rehearsed us until we were blue in the face about one little camera, you know, and everyone had to be very specific. And it was about the simplicity that was exciting. Yes, attitude. <laughs> Amazing. We're going to bring in Wayne right now. Yay! And everybody belt. Yay! Yay! So we're gonna pause it here for a second because Wicked was like the thing. Wait, hold on, wait for it. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome, Wayne. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Ah, thank you very much. That's amazing. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah, right. We 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 just wanted to. I mean, everybody knows who you are, but we just wanted to give a little snippet. Um, uh, okay. So I, I want to hear about Holler if you hear me, which I didn't. I had never really seen that clip, but right. we want we like to start at the beginning, okay. and 
And I think this will kind of maybe lead into a chorus line because from the research that I've done and from what you said, you didn't really dance as a child. Right, I started 18. That's amazing. And what what led you, I mean, I, I so like I started at 18 and then I worked with Bob Fosse like five years well, later. Yeah, it's kind of a weird journey. I mean, I, I think I was always into, um, well, I was into the MGM broad, uh, musicals. Okay. And Gene Kelly's in the Fred Astaire's and as a kid. So watching that, I didn't know, you know, that it meant anything. I just loved that stuff, the visuals, how beautiful it was. Did and, you watch them on the big screen or did you watch them in your house? Oh, in my house. Yeah, mm -hmm. TV. Plus the fact yeah. at that time when I was young, there was a thing called um, Shindig and American Dance, uh, dance American Bandstand. And it was yes. like, uh, it was like uh, a dance. There were dancers on it that were consistent every week. And then they had dance comp competitions and stuff. And they were doing social dancing and stuff like that. So I, I always had an interest in it. And then I, I was raised in the Bronx and I moved to Westchester when I was 13 and went to a high school, which was completely different than a, uh, than a Catholic high school. So Catholic high school, no sports, no activities, no nothing. So I go to a, I go to a high school and I'm introduced to it and I be, immediately became a greaser with tight pants and a, a leather jacket with my hair put back a big pompadour and just the, probably the worst influence in the world. And so but that's but, from the movie, that, how, how did you become? It how, was, it you was kind of like Greece. It was truly yeah. like Greece. But oh, wow. then all of, all of the black kids in the school took me under their wing and they taught me dances. So all my friends, when I went out with them, they would smoke and get stoned and be in the corners, stoned out of their minds. And I'd be dancing. And wow. I learned all these dances and stuff like that. So I, I kind of like had it in me for some right. reason. It was natural, but it was social, natural, just do the dances of the day and stuff like that. Wow. I kind of like work with my uncle in a pharmaceutical factory. I just thought I was going to be a pharmacist and I thought that was the easy route. So graduated high school, went to junior high school. Uh, I mean, junior college and somewhere in the middle of junior college, it was like, what am I doing? So I opened up dance magazine and I went up and down dance magazine. Oh, I'll tell you about the high school. Uh, yeah. I go back down. to the high school. What I you forgot did. that. And, um, I pressed and I got Brockport University and I I went there, I transferred and I went up to Brockport and I became a dance major, uh, a phys ed minor. Okay, but the, in high school, in my junior year, I was on the track team for some reason, don't ask me why, and there was a gymnastic club. So I was finally doing something. So the phys ed teacher from the women, uh, all the girls, she was the choreographer and they were doing the, first time musical in the high school, Oklahoma. And I'm just trying to think of this before we started talking. I don't know if I auditioned, like auditioned, like she gave a dance combination or she just went around to all the guys in the school and just picked guys because she needed dance men. Um, right. she, she picked me and I, um, I was Curly in the Dream Ballet and my wife, Kathy, was Lori. And I sent you that picture. That's the yes, we have it. Chrissy's right. doing it. Right. Oh right. That is. Amazing. I didn't know that that was what it was from. Right, and then I did Little Abna, and then I did this whole junior college thing, dance magazine, wow. get to become a That's dance amazing. man. Amazing. Now, okay, we're gonna pull up this picture as we pull this picture. Oh, here it is. Oh, is that so sweet, sweet. Kathy? I love it. Is that bizarre? She was a cheerleader. I was this greasy person. Obviously, it was like oil and water. She, no, you know, very attractive to each other. I would flirt with her, but I had my girlfriend, and she had her boyfriends and stuff like that. Eventually, we wound up together. And now you've been married for how long? Uh, forty-eight years. Wow, wow. that's yeah. amazing. That is probably your biggest accomplishment, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. So now I also read, okay, so you did the whole, like, I love it, you, Oklahoma Little Abner, you did, decided to go to college for dance, but I read somewhere that you saw cabaret and that that yeah. was like a defining moment for you. Right. So my aunt and uncle, my aunt Norma, my mother's sister and her husband 
took me to Broadway and took me to see Cabaret. And I was like, whoa, are you kidding me? And Frosty I turned to them. Frosty Cabaret. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, no, the original Cabaret. Oh, original. Okay, okay. So I don't, it wasn't, oh. well, I don't know what it was. Where is the original Cabaret? Hmm. They, must yeah. been, they must have been. And must I have said, been. is that people really do that for a living? And they said, yeah, they're like professional performers. And I went, oh, okay. And so, and I ha had already done the musical thing. I just didn't know there was like Broadway. Um, that was your first Broadway show? Yeah. And then she took me, they took me another time to the Radio City for Christmas. And I saw the Rockettes and stuff. And that was a whole nother thing. So I had this interest and I kind of was in the closet when I was like working. When I went, when I went to, uh, I guess, junior college, I used to drive up to Connecticut 45 minutes and take jazz classes. Wow. Don't ask me why. And it was because the choreographer lived up there and he said, why don't you come up and take some classes just for the hell of it. So I did take classes along the way. I mean, that was pretty much my only thing. And then I got to college and then all, all hell broke loose. Wow. And when you saw Cabaret, you were what, like 19, like a teenager, 18? Um, I must have been like around 17, 18. Yeah. 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 So then the course of your trajectory just changed. Yeah, and then I just shifted gears, and then it went on from there. But well, how did your parents feel about that? Uh, they, they were fine. I mean, you know, they. I was going to another college. They didn't know what I was going to do as a professional. Neither did I. Um, I think in the in the two years that I was in Brockport, I auditioned for Summer Stock, and I did. George Bunt was the choreographer, and I did Hello Dolly um, on the music circuit. And then wow. um, the, ne the next year I did Oklahoma with John Davidson and Maine with Angela Lansbury. Wow. And then I did, I did another production of Hello Dolly. This was all when I was in Brockport wow. University wow. in college. So I was doing that in between. And then I graduated and Kathy had one more year um, and I started auditioning for Broadway. And that's how I got Seesaw. I was going back and forth from Brockwood. So how did you figure that out? You know what I mean? Like, when, yeah, like how did you know, how did you know how to like, where to audition? I mean, was it back just backstage? And at that point, did you know how to sing yeah. yet? When, when did you make the transition also to adding singing into your um, life? You know, I think it was because of the Holo Dolly and um, Rick Atwell was in the company and we danced as yeah. bookends and, um, you know, they kind of like educated me along the way. You should go to Broadway, you should audition, you what you gotta do. And I found out backstage was the paper. Um, and I went and I found the auditions and I went to the auditions and, you know, went on from there. And um, Seesaw was the biggest one that I did and it was a hell ride. Um, yeah, tell us about that because you worked with Michael Bennett. Like, what was that like? And how long did it take you to get to Broadway once you left, when, when you graduated? How long did it take well, you to get to Broadway? Well, so I graduated, I started auditioning, and um, I guess it was like around a month or two of callbacks and back and forth and stuff like that. And then, and I was commuting back and forth to Brockport because that's where Kathy was. So even though I had graduated, I was going back and forth. And then I got a phone call that I got the show. So then I had a, you know, pack up and co come down to New York and start rehearsing. And Kathy stayed up there and graduated, and then she joined me later. Wait, can you take us yeah. through really? If that's your Broadway debut, can you just take us through what you were feeling like going to the audition? Did you know of Michael Bennett as Michael Bennett? You know how we nothing. get with biographers. Nothing, knew nothing. And I think I'm thinking that Tony Stevens was the original choreographer, or was it? Um, uh, Tall, handsome guy. What's his name? Tommy Toon. No, not Tommy Toon. Um, he was married to. Let me wait, see. I got it. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Let me see. I don't. I don't know, but it'll come to me. Oh, but yeah. it, it was tragic from the beginning. So we started our. We started auditioning. I mean, we got the show. We started rehearsing. It was 
at Lenny Kazan and all the Billy star was in it, all these different people and stuff and on an ensemble. And we go to Detroit. So we start previewing in Detroit and we find out that Michael Bennett is in the house or Michael Bennett is taking over. And so the next day when we were performing, Oh God, what's his name? God, what's his it'll name? Come to you. Yeah, it'll come to you. It'll come to you tonight. Anyway, the other choreographer, not Tony Stevens, was going around and tapping people on the shoulder and saying, "Don't come back tomorrow." <gasps> they were they fired the whole cast, the whole principal group, all the principals. <laughs> they brought in Tommy Tune. Um, they brought in um, uh, who was the lead? Uh, you saw. Lainey Kazan, no, not Lainey Kazan. Um, oh my God. I knew, was, I wish I knew. We'll look it up, we'll look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Oh, really good, look it up. Okay. They look tried it up. everything. I am, I'll do it. I was, I was hiding in clothes racks because oh. I thought they were gonna touch me and, and tell me that I was out, but I was in. Oh so, my God. Tommy, Tommy Walsh came, Bayork Lee came, uh, Tommy Toon came, they fired everybody and he brought his entourage in. Michael Bennett. Later, Michael Bennett. Two weeks later, completely different show. What? Yeah, Kasha? Yeah. No, no, no. And then we moved, we came into New York. We went into the Euros Theater, which is now the which is now uh where Wicked is. Which, oh, uh, perfect. Yeah. The girl, yeah. We opened. And there Tommy you go. Walsh? Uh, Tommy Walsh? Tommy Walsh was in it also. In, okay. uh, I'm just in trying to find this. Tommy me, uh, uh, see I, John Gavin, Tommy Toon. I'm looking at all these names on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, who's the, the, who is the lead? Who is uh, We're yeah. trying to figure it out. It's on a Wikipedia. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. So, so Wayne, like when when the original choreographer was swapped, like fired, and and Michael Bennett came in. Did, like what? I mean, at that point, did he? Did you know who he was yet? Not really. Okay. And Not really, but for some reason he grabbed me and I was the dance core. I don't know if you know that about Michael Bennett. No. Michael Bennett used a core of dancers, put oh, them yeah. in the room, okay. and they collaborated and came up with stuff, choreography steps. And yeah. Michael would come in the room and he would go, okay, I don't like that. Take that out. Do two of those. Do one of these. Do this. And I'll be back. And then we would put the combination together and we do that a couple of times. And in that room was Donna McKechnie, me, Bayork Lee, Tommy Walsh, and Bob Avian. Wow. So that was, that was the group of people that he was like building. He was really the choreographer in a way. Well, I mean, a, well, who knew? We would do whatever, you know, you do whatever you do. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but the thing that was so amazing is, I mean, it was obvious that he was such a genius because he couldn't get bogged down with going in the room and making up steps. So we wow. used the people that he thought could handle it, throw, right. them, throw them in a room together, and then we collaborated, came up with stuff. And that same thing happened with Chorus Line. We did the same thing with Chorus Line. So he and, was like, he was editing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from, yeah. And then he would do this choreography of transitions and music and things right. coming in and dancing through and coming out and wait. I mean, that's, I got a lot of that from him. I have to right. say all, yeah. all that stuff. Um, and so there you go. That was the beginning of wow. my, my career. Yeah. Oh my God. What an amazing first start. I mean, yeah. Okay, so so then you're like you're in New York, and once you kind of got in, like it it seemed in terms of like your path that once you were in, you were like in. In. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, and then I I stuck with the show for like a year and a half, and then I auditioned, and I got a show called um, Rachel Lily Rosenblum and Don't Forget It. Okay. Ellen Green was in it, and all, and Kelly Bishop was in it, and there was oh. all of these people, and it was. Um, it was amazing, but we knew it was like embarrassing. And I think I was a swing and I swang all the men in the show. Wow. I 
I prayed every night that the show would close or not open or something. It was like ridiculous. Was it stressful as a swing? Like, talk about your life as a swing in that show. Is it stressful? Because both Alexis and I met as swings <laughs> on the National Tour of Posse. No, uh, it, Rachel Lily Rosenblum never opened. So it yeah. did close on, on uh, we previewed and we closed. Wow. And so I, then I went back to Seesaw to try to get back on the show and they said no. And then my next job was I replaced Albert Stevenson in Irene. Oh. And I did that with uh, Debbie Reynolds and then Jane yeah. Powell. Wow. And then Chorus Line came up. And Chorus. then and that's, wow. that was like the whole kind of like journey. Well, right. how did Chorus Line come up? Can you can you yeah. talk a little bit about your experience with Okay, okay. so I'm in Irene now, but I went through the gamut. Um, right. And I met Tony Stevens, of course, and I met Michonne, Michelle, Michonne Peacock. And they had this idea about doing a musical about chorus dancers, the dancers in the show, because the audience always waited for production numbers. We were the ones that kind of kept the show alive. And so they thought, OK, we're going to write, we're going to do a show and we're going to feature the dancers behind the scene. So they invited all of the so-called best dancers at that time on Broadway to a, a, like a, a session after our shows, which was like at 12 o'clock at night. Wow. Was this so, not at Michael Bennett's house? No, this was, it, it was at the studio. It was at a studio. Cool. But Michelle and um, Michonne and Tony were so smart. They got, they called up Michael and got Michael involved so they can use a big name for us to say, hey, this is something. And exactly, wow. that's what we did. I called up Tommy Walsh. I said, I'm going, are you going to go? He said, sure, let's go. So we, you know, people went and we wound up after our shows half dead and we did a dance class. Tony gave a dance class. And then that's the first tape session. And then we all sat around and we talked until I guess 11, 12 o'clock the next day. So we did, yeah, we did it like a therapy session. We went around the whole circle wow. and everyone told their story about when, when they were kids up until the point where they got to Broadway. That was the, the journey and we all went around. Wow. And of course Michael Bennett started and he opened it up and it was like a floodgate because he wanted us to tell all the stuff. Right, Not you tell me about what, who, what the, is this, what is, is this around this era? Oh, yeah, so what's that photo? That's that's course line. Oh, it is? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. And then can you explain this is a course line? Are you guys recording it? Is that what's happening? I think, oh, we're, recording. I think we're recording the album. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're oh, recording. Stop that's oh my God. God. With those bell bottoms, was that crazy? And what yeah, amazing. Amazing. I love it. I love I love your I I don't know what's in your hand. I, I don't know, like a, maybe a cigarette, but I didn't smoke. Wait a minute. Okay. I don't know what I was doing. Wow! And then we have another photo of you as Mike, obviously. So, how did you end up? How did you end up playing yeah. that character? Because it wasn't necessarily your story; like it yeah. was a little different from who you are. So, how did that come so about? We did, we did the first. So we did we did that tape session, and then we did it one more time. And the next time I taught the class. And we went around the circle, and this time it was when we started Broadway and where we were today. So we did that was that whole thing. So okay. in the meantime, they were taping all of that stuff. So then we did three workshops, um, yeah, and uh, we all got paid a hundred a hundred dollars a week. Wow. And first workshop, we just danced. We never opened our mouths. We never did anything. We just oh, besides the fact after we did all those tapings. We had to come in and audition for ourselves. I gave, they handed me a piece of paper. I of, read this. Yeah, they, a piece of paper of my story that I told about the audition for Seesaw. So I pick up the paper and I look at it and I go, I can't do this. Are you kidding me? He said, just read the paper. I said, no, I can't read the paper. It's, Michael it's, said this. Michael Bennett said this. I told you. He said, I said, well, I'll put down the paper. I'll tell you the story again. So we said, okay, put the paper down. And tell. So we already started creating Zach and Mike's kind of relationship. The wow. big thing back and forth. Well, 
I, I'll relax if you start at the end. He said, no, Mike, I'll start with you. Well, it'd be better if you started at the end. I mean, that was me. So <laughs> that's so cool. So insane. But um, oh my God. so after that, they started giving us monologues. They started playing around with stuff and they started switching and swapping things. And right. someone would do, I would do a monologue about me, me being married and having a, a, my first kid and buying a house. And he said, they're not going to believe that. I'm going to give yeah. it to you. I'm going to give it to Don on the other end. You're not going to do that. You do Tommy Walsh's story. And he was like doing that to us, doing head trips. Oh, wow. So even when we weren't doing anything, we were on the line all the time. Wow. So we were always terrified. We were shitting in our pants. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, it's like, it's like you kept you on your toes all the time. Right. So anyway, Michael Masita did, I can do that in the, in one of the workshops. The next time we came back, Michael was doing follies and, and Michael gave me, I can do that. Right. Michael Bennett. Okay. Michael Bennett. And that's how I got the number. And once how, did, how, did it, it, how did it get choreographed on you? How did that, how did this process go with doing the? Um, yeah. Well, this is, you know, this is weird. This thing you're going to show, if you show yeah. it, is... Yeah, I'm going to show it right now. So yeah. I hung out with Lee Theodore for a while. So she was a big part of my learning experience also. Lee uh, Theodore? Lee Theodore. She was the original Anybody's in West Can I Side. play it? Let's play it. Uh, Maybe you can talk through it. So her idea was, this is a piece of choreography from Gene Kelly in a movie. And she said... I want you to reconstruct that choreography and do sing I can do that to it. That's what I did. Wow. This is Gene Kelly's choreography, not mine from this show. Wow. No. Yep. You're so smooth, Wayne. It's it's all Gene Kelly from I don't know, singing in the rain or one of his MGM movies names. So, no. The reason why I did it was because I was studying to do Jack Cole's story and right. I was reconstructing all of Jack. I think Jack Cole may have choreographed this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, some of it has that. I like yeah. the, the, the flow. Yeah. But was this like a benefit? Because obviously this wasn't during a chorus line because this is. It, it, was, um, it was a TV special. Donna McKechnie's in it also. Oh, okay. We did something from Charlie's Place. Cool. It's fun to use the whole stage like this rather than just in the show. And of course, she didn't do it. She made me do the whole thing. She said, oh, just stage it. Here's the stage. Do it. And, and then, oh, my God, it just went on forever. No, no, it's actually amazing because this is this is more than what it is in, in the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, use the whole stage. Stop yeah. it. It's too bad you couldn't have yeah, done this. But the sad been. thing is, is, I did these leaps at the end, and they shot me from above instead of like underneath my legs. So it looks like I didn't even get off the ground. Look at that. That's right, ridiculous. Right here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, you know how to choreograph for the camera. We'll get yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> that was amazing. Wow. Yeah, oh, that was, I mean, you I made mean, me sweat. Yeah, I mean, so like. When once you did it, chorus line. I mean, I know, like, as I saw that Jack Cole, you know, that sort of changed the trajectory. Like, it puts you on the map in a different way than as right. a performer. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, it was it was rough. I did two and a half years with her, studying and reconstructing and stuff, and then we went to Japan, and she kind of left us there, and said, "The show's a mess, but you're brilliant, so keep doing what you do," and left. And there I was in Japan. Yeah. Right. So, right. but I learned this with a chorus leap. Oh, 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 that was no. This, lead. Was, okay. this was Jack. It was a show oh, called Jack. Jack. Right, where you play Jack Cole. Yeah. Yes. Linda but, Haberman but, was in it. There was a lot of Johnny Minio. But Linda was Haberman awesome. was also. That's amazing. Right. She was my director in Ro yeah. Rockettes. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. But that was um, after a chorus line, obviously. Yes. Yes. Jack Cole. Yeah. Yeah. How long did you stay with the chorus line? I stayed with chorus line for two and a half years. Wow. 
how do you feel about the fame that came from that? And where, because I, I will say for, for myself of doing the show up for a, for a year and, and filling y'all shoes was a big deal. And well, um, I, it was a rough show. I mean, because when, when we got off our game and our game was being young, being naive and being hungry for a show, when we got off that game and we were doing a Broadway show and we were performing, that's when the show went flat. So then we would get the threatening notes with Bob, um, Bob um, Michael would give me a note and say, I want you to come in for a rehearsal with me alone. And wow. so, and I'd go in there and he'd go, uh, you know, how are you and schmooze and all that stuff. And then he said to me, uh, we'll do the number. And I said, do what number? And he said, I can do that. I said, why? He said, because I want to see it. I said, well, then come at night, you know, then see it in the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we went through all of that, but I didn't even have to do anything. I walked out of that place shaking like a leaf. And I swear to God, for the next three months, I was brilliant because I thought he was watching me and he was going to throw me out any minute. So yeah. I, you know, you have, you have to stay on your gig. But yeah. one night I was doing that number and I went back into the line and I said to Bayork, did I do that? Did I do that number? She said, yeah. I went deaf, dumb and blind. I didn't remember doing that. And I went, okay, it's time. I have to go. Oh, wow. And then did you find that was a singular show, Wayne? Did you find that like, I mean, Lexus has also done the show as well uh, as Cassie, but when you're doing it like 400 perform, when you're doing it so many times, like it was it's so exactly. singular to me. Yeah. It was like barely, it was all yeah. about yourself. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it got really hard. I mean, because you constantly, you can't relax. And even when you're in the background doing all of the, uh, the staging in the back when, you know, at the ballet was going on and stuff like that. I mean, you ha you for some reason your your physical present has to be alive. You have to be there. I remember yeah. once, I remember once being in the back, facing the up wall, and taking my arm up my body and getting sweat out of my eye and bringing my arm down and getting back the line. I got a note from Michael. What the hell were you doing back there? Wow. Yeah, right. I would make me sweat. <laughs> yeah, because so there was just no, yeah, you just Go didn't off. get it. Yeah, yeah. So it was intense and, um, you know, really special, but I really needed to, um, I needed to go. Yeah. You know, I don't know well, how kids stay in shows for long periods of time. I constantly yeah. had to keep moving. So yeah, then I, I went, um, I went to my audition, I got the act. Which I yeah. have, yeah. Is this is the act with Liza Minnelli, right? Or no? Am I yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Keep going, Lex. Um, well, I was saying, and then, and then, of course, the next okay. you also, you also got so, to work I mean, with. It's kind of interesting, and it's like you know, chorus line was all about us being the star, blah 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 blah, and you know, not being in the ensemble. I mean, of course, we did one, so we did go back anyway. So I thought, you know what, I'm going back. I'm just dancing. And so I, there were four boys. It was just Roger. Yeah, there you go. Amazing. I'm right there. Right there. Yeah. Right here. That was the hard, <laughs> hardest part. Look at those awesome. Ron Lewis, unbelievable. This guy? Ron Lewis, huh? Is no, that that's, guy? that. No, this is me. In front of him. Oh, I know that. Who's, yeah. Where's that's Ron Lewis? Who's that? Oh, that's Roger Manami, and that's Albert Stevenson behind me. So there was only, and then there was another guy, Michael. I don't, I don't see him, and there were only, um, I think, three girls. Wow. And, four girls. and who and who choreographed that? Ron Lewis. Ron Lewis. Okay. Uh, yeah, a uh, uh, Las Vegas uh, choreographer that Liza knew. I wow. got incredible reviews in this show. Wow incredible reviews in the show. And that sh this show led me to dancing. Okay, because Bob saw you in the show. Uh, Bob saw me in the show. Okay. But, but before he saw me in the show, 
Graziella Danielle yeah. set up an, a private audition for me to go audition for Bob for dancing, but the show is already cast. Wow. Okay. Whoa, that's super cool. Now we're talking about Bob. How do you know Grazi? What? Yeah. So I'm we're in the Minskoff studios and we're in one room rehearsing the act, the act and Bob is doing auditions in another room. So I go from that room lunchtime and I go across the hall, wow. knock on the door and there's Annie and Bob and uh, uh, Gordon Harold and a drummer, Bobby, uh, someone. Right. And you? Was he uh, big then? Was it a big deal to you then? Considering big deal. <laughs> it, it was. I mean, but you know, I was. I guess I was scared, and I. Oh, I did audition for Bob for Chicago. Okay. I didn't. I didn't get it, and I got. And I got Coruscant. So it was. Right. That was the trade off. But. Right. Right. Um, and so <laughs> he put me through the audition. We did a little tea for two thing with Annie and me. Amazing. And Explain yeah. that because that is why we do yeah. these two for twos. We call them two for twos too. Is oh, it? okay. Well, it's you know, it's a very kind of like. Uh, technical technique, simple, really simplistic, just beautiful style. Roll through your arms, snap your fingers. Okay. It was like body body language, yeah. kind of like you pull over. And I can't explain it, but it's it's his typical thing. And you snap, and yeah. you go around. You do. You kind of glide around the. It was beautiful, yeah. um, beautiful little combination. At the end, you just do a double pirouette, and then you do that little snap thing with your foot behind the other foot and you're like that, you know that. Yeah. So we did that and then he taught me another little piece of choreography. And then he said, um, you wanna sing? I said, sure. At, at that point, I was like, am I auditioning or am I having a party? I mean, it was, he was dancing and he was dancing, I was dancing. He was looking at me, I don't know if he was looking at me, I didn't care, I was just dancing. Nice. So I sing yeah. my stupid um, Stevie Wonder song <laughs> and he <laughs> raised, he raised, yeah, he raised the key three times on me. He said, could you go a little bit higher? I said, sure, why not? And I'm telling you, and you know dancers, you, when you open your mouth, you, you choke up, yeah. you can't yeah. Yeah. Singing like a bird, could care less, just <laughs> singing, go up, go up another nut, go up another one, and I went. You were and so I, comfortable, why did you feel so comfortable? That's so amazing, that says something, right? Because he's brilliant. Act he's a brilliant director. He made me feel comfortable. Wow. He, he wasn't judging me. He was dancing with me. He took the time to even pretend that, you know, he was looking at me. He, the show was cast. He had everybody. Wow. So getting back to opening night of the act. So I'm doing this step and I'm in the middle of the stage in this semicircle. And I'm kind of like in a demi plie and my arms are out and I'm snapping my fingers and I'm looking into the audience and there's Bob Fawcett. Wow. I could have, sh he's staring right in my eyes. <laughs> I almost threw up. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. So got through the whole night, went to the party, ran into Bob and he says to me, I want you in dancing. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you, but I want you in dancing. He said, are you interested? I said, yes, yes. I said, but you can't tell Liza because I'm the dance captain, she'll kill me, we just opened. He said, fine. So I doubled, I doubled, yeah, the act at night and I did dancing rehearsals in the day until wow. we, started, until we, yeah. Until, until we did when? Until we did previews and then I had to quit. So then I told Liza and she said, fine, it's okay. I already did like six months with her, so wow. she, she was happy. So this wow. big deal I'm gonna show, is this from Dancing? Big deal, the big deal club. No, that's from, yeah. that's from Big Deal. Oh, just kidding. When it's is called Be Me Daddy. Uh, oh. So Be Me Daddy is after I did Dancing, after I started choreographing, you know, I really got into choreographing, Bob gives me a call and he said, I'm doing a show called Big Deal and I'd like you to do it. You interested? And I said, yes and hung up the phone and went, holy shit, I'm a fat pig right now and I need to get back into shape. And I did. I want to rewind though after we watch this. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I think maybe this was the best piece of choreography I've ever done on Broadway. It's amazing. I love that. It's amazing. Yes. It's the way it hits with the music. That's a little bit. You know the timing on that's all off, right? Yeah, because of the it's because of the delay. The delay. Is it? Yeah, a little bit. We're behind oh. the beat. But look how cool it is. Ugh. Oh. And this is my favorite part. God. Okay, so is this a myth? I just saw the teacup fingers being relaxed there. Does it always have to be? What with a hat? Yeah. Like they were relaxed. Uh, yeah. But you know, I don't even know if he choreographed that. I mean, I yes he did. Oh. I actually rehearsed in that outfit. I rehearsed with a hat. I grew a beard. I had suspenders on my jazz pants. And and he he kind of wardrobe me the same way. That was no joke. It's, so it's, some, it's some serious stuff. Um, Wayne, we um, yeah. and created the deal when I was doing Broadway Theater Project. He recreated uh, Daddy on all her seasons. So I got to, I got I learned this from Anne. Really? Yeah. This? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the ensemble stuff. I didn't do this this part. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of did this though, but yeah. Well, okay, so let's pause. Let's okay. pause because I yeah. I want to go I want to go back because we it, it we still have to talk about how you know like you you get to you're you're doing dancing and you're like you know you're in you're in the it club but then like what pulled you towards wanting to start choreographing. And cause I know you started doing more like commercials and less stage stuff. So how did that come about for you? Uh, I, I really wanted to be Gene Kelly. I wanted to go to, I wanted to go to LA and just be discovered and do movies and just be those guys, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire. But um, I guess because I was doing all of these high profile, high profile shows um, and um, I met a lot of people and I studied when talk about classes. When I got into the city, I studied from every single person that was teaching. Wow. I went around the the city and just went to different people. Ron Farella, I Betsy Howell, um, uh, Frank Hatchett. I mean, um, every choreographer that was doing yeah. classes. I taught for Peter Gennaro. I, you know, I did... So um, I used to audition for commercials and I got a lot of commercials as a, dan a dancer. Yeah. And then Bob Giraldi, who did all the Dr. Pepper, Michael Jackson stuff, said to me, do you want to choreograph a spot? And I said, sure, what do I want? Yeah, you know, fine, whatever. And <laughs> sure. I, you know, I actually think it's really helped me as a choreographer because it, I didn't come from concert dancing. I came from a real point of view, yeah. selling a real product, with real people and getting the real people able to move and, and toning the dancers down so much and getting them to look real and move. So yeah. it had to be from a real place. And I did, I swear to God, I did hundreds of commercials, just wow. popping them. Like I did three commercials a month. I was, was doing- Was that good for commercials back then too? The commercials were huge and huge and actually, the thing that I kind of regret a little bit, it was like when it was just about when um, music videos were happening. And so I did do a couple of musical music videos, but it was around the clock. It was like a week's work. You killed yourself and you made like $2,000. And I decided to just stick with the commercials yeah. that I would do for two days and make $10,000. But I never got a reel together. I never got like, you know, the LA kind of yeah. reel together because I wasn't doing high profile music videos. Now, were you living in LA at the time or New York? No, I was living in New York. I was okay. in New York. Oh, you stayed in New York, even though you said you wanted to be Dean Kelly. You still, you never had dreams after Chorus Line? Cause well, I think you, know, you know, everyone in the original company, well, not everyone, there was five of us that stayed in New York, but the rest of the company, all went to LA and they thought they were going to be stars. Yeah. And I was, uh, that was me. I know. And I was like, no, I can't. I have a house. I have a wife. I have 
I guess two kids at that time. I'm not wow. going nowhere. I'm staying here. Yeah. So I, I stayed there. And you started quite well. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, and, it, I yeah. and I, you know, I, I went in and out. I was dancing with Cheetah Rivera in her act. Um, so it kept me in shape kind yeah. of, um, I did, I did baby. I got a Tony nomination. I, I, you know, I started, I did Jerry's girls. I did, I, it was like, I didn't even want to do it. I, I started getting into it, but it was like, okay, what's the next show? I want to dance that kind of a thing. And that but, became a big deal. But that after dancing, I got trapped because I got a Tony nomination for Annie and I were the only two that got Tony nominations for featured actor in a musical, which was unheard of. And then it was like, really? I mean, do I, can I really go back to an ensemble? So I kind of like did that number on my head. And then it really kind of like got hard because then they were, and I mean, you know, I'm short, I'm a great dancer. Um, I'm not a leading man. There's not a lot of roles out there. And so I did Perfectly Frank, which was a featured kind of like dance singing, song and dance man kind of a thing, which was great. Um, and then I just kept choreographing. I was right. doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. And because of Mike, just the character Mike in general, like the one that revived, same thing. Shecky had the same thing, like who, who, oh, you, you in the yeah. revival. Same, yeah. Like he's working and he, and he, and he'll, he'll still every now and then get some parts, but he's, he still had that trajectory. Like he had, he wanted to do film and, and TV. Right. And right. Didn't, you know, he has a family, same kind of thing. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, yeah, it kind of it kind of limited me, but yet it kept me focused in a way because yeah. I yeah. I had to like I did industrials, I did commercials, I choreographed, I danced, I you know I was everywhere because I always needed to get yeah paycheck, yeah. throw the balls <laughs> yeah. up in the air, whatever yeah. happened, and you know when a person like Bob Fo Fossey calls you up and and says he's doing another show, you know uh, I'm going, uh, I'm there. So, and that's what happened. And I, you know, I was out of shape and it was, it was so funny because I wore tights. I wore plastic sweatpants, sweatpants on top of the plastic sweatpants, t-shirt, tank top, sweat. I was like, I was in boot camp and he <laughs> laughed, he laughed so hard at me because he came up to me and he said, you're trying to get back into shape, aren't you? I said, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing though. Like you had that kind of relationship with him. Like he, yeah. he right. because from what, you know, I mean, what, that was one of the things of, of the show is like that, that he loved his dancers and he, yeah. He loved, yeah. Right. And, and you know, I think I, I loved him and I know he loved me and, you know, he did appreciate me and he knew that I was completely focused. And when I was rehearsing dancing, I was so tired that I, I just used to sit on the, in the front of the stage and just focus on what he was doing. If he called me to be in, in whatever, I'd just get up and go and do it. I was like, I was on it. And there was like no bullshit. I wasn't there. I was there for the work. I just wanted it. He put me in every fucking number. Wow. I didn't have a minute to breathe and dance it. I was out of the girl's number and I was out of percussion four. That was it. Everything else I was in. Wow. I'm, he killed me. He gave me he gave me so, solo singing. He everything. I, I just, just gave me was everything. He nice? Was he nice? Was he to nice? Me, yeah, to me. I mean, you know, I'm sure everyone has their own interpretation of what he was, but I think he respected me. Maybe he saw himself in me, and yeah. I was focused, and I did the work. You know, it wasn't much you could do to me to clean me up. I, he used to beat up Bruce Anthony Davis. I felt so bad for him. He was like, do it like him. Just do it like him. And it was like, I'm so sorry. You know, and it was like, Bruce was Bruce. I was me. And we were doing the same steps, but, you know, we're different. Yeah, well, you're, you, maybe your body, you're in Fosse's body. I mean, he was little also. Like, maybe it was something about the way your bodies were flying across the stage. He, yeah. flew, he flew as a dancer. He was a yeah. great dancer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, so, so I, I, I mean, like, you know, I, I want to, like, touch it because we have, like, about 10 minutes left. I want to touch it. I know. it's It flies by. Wow. Because, you know, 
longer. Wow. I know. Okay. I, I want to, I want to touch upon about how like, you know, okay. You, you're doing big deal, but then like, you, got, you did, you want? Yeah. then you got Tommy and being a part of that, because I know you were doing a lot of commercials, but, and you did baby obviously, but I mean, Tommy was like a force in terms of, I saw that production of Tommy. That's the first right. time I, knew who right. you are, Wayne, because I saw that show and I was like, holy shit. I, yeah. I loved the, how, right. how like everybody hit things so hard. Look. Yeah. You know what they said to me when I, when Pete and Des gave me the job? They said, I don't want to see any choreography. Ah, cool. Paul oh, Nolan's a dear friend of mine. He ki kills it in here. Cool. It's just a little yeah. clip of this. Yeah. You saw this yeah. last? Yes, I did. Yeah. I saw it with the original cast. I think. I think. Uh, I don't know who this. What company this is? We can be my friends. We can all be men. So what was that like, Wayne? I mean, working with them, I know like. Well, and you know, it was, it was so special because I, like I said, Pete and Des both said, I, we don't want to see choreography. Wow. So I said, okay, I can do this because I did, it with, I did it with commercials. So it was all about mannerisms, body language, attitude, you know, like bobbing your head, jumping yeah. around like a fool, being loud, being nasty, yeah. you know. And yeah, I saw like there was a poster of, of um, uh, Elvis Presley in a postcard, and he was in a big squat position with his arms up in the air, holding his, yeah, that thing. And I built that whole number on that whole rock and roll thing. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. So um, the best thing about it was after we did it at La Jolla, um, Des calls me in and he said, and I'm thinking, oh God, I'm fired. And he goes, we'd like you to add on to sensation, make pinball wizard a little bit bigger and longer, have a little bit more of a, a dance break in it. So they, they embraced it and they were like, okay, let's go, let's do it. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was wow. a really exciting time, I have to say. Wow, and who, this, I did have a question about this, like when did you start working with associates and like having assistants and how did, like, how do you work with those people in your, in your, um, you know, I went through a lot of them and it was really interesting. It was like, at that time there were people that were right for the project. Lisa Mordente, Cheetah Rivera's daughter was my assistant for Tommy. Wow. And it's kind of interesting because at that point I was dancing with Lisa. I was dancing with Liza. No, I was dancing with Cheetah. And I knew this, Chrissy, you, you'll kind of appreciate this. I knew yeah. there was something going on in LA, a different kind of an energy in LA, choreography and dancers in LA. And I knew Barry Lather through oh. Cheetah, yeah. And he was doing, he was doing um, Janet Jackson at the time. Right. right. And I was dancing with Cheetah at some ballroom at that time. And I remember walking the streets until three o'clock in the morning in um, uh, what, what's the real fancy place? Beverly uh, Hills. Yeah. Sunset Boulevard. Beverly Sunset Hills. Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And I was like having a nervous breakdown, thinking, "Holy shit, I got to do something." I stayed in L.A. I took classes with Joe Tremaine. Yeah. Uh, started like doing all kinds of stuff, getting involved with people around me that did video work. And I got that edge that LA had. And that's, and I think that's what influenced me and all of that stuff is in Tommy. Sure. Wow. Yeah. So cool. it was interesting, but I did realize if I didn't change it up, if I was going to do just Broadway, right. I wasn't going anywhere. So I needed to have an edge. Wayne, there's also, I think it's important that we look at just, you can talk through this because I know because of time, but we've skipped over Dream and Aida and how to succeed. I mean, you, yeah. <laughs> we want to make sure we've said this right too, right? That, I mean, that you have, uh, how many Tonys have you won so that we're clear? I, I have seven Tony nominations, but I just won once. Won once for? For Tommy. 
for Tommy. For Tommy. Wow. Okay. Because yeah, there's different things on the web that I was like, wait, one person's saying this, one person's saying yeah. this. So I yeah. want to be clear. But I, I thought it'd be really neat. Uh, was that Nancy Lemininger in Dream? Am I right in that? Nancy? Yeah. Lemininger? Yes. Was Nancy and Susie Miser was in it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's look I at think, I think Aida was after um Tommy, so we haven't skipped it yet. Yeah, Aida's yeah. after Tommy. Oh, sorry. I'm doing the order of his uh reel. So oh, oh yeah, no, I, I was going in chronologically. And then a uh, sweet charity was after Wicked, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. right. I just wanted to ask you, and, and I know you want to play the clip, Chrissy, but I wanted to ask you now you've done two shows that Fosse had choreographed. And I was just curious how you felt about I mean. I worked with you in charity and I was a swing. So I got yeah. to watch a lot of that process and Corinne and like, right, there were right. some, but, but just like that must have been really hard. Yes, it was the hardest show I choreographed in my whole career because I had this weight on me about living up to the expectation. I didn't want to reconstruct his work because it was, right. wasn't going to serve my purpose. I was, I just did Wicked. And for me to go into a show and reconstruct Bob's work, I wasn't progressing forward. So I was caught between, okay, Wayne, you're gonna have to do your thing. And of course, tip my hat to him. Um, it took me it took me a week to get off the ground. I could not get up on my feet. I was I was paralyzed. And you know, do we spend it without a bar? Uh, you know, it was tricky and risky. Yeah, and then. You know, the Frug and the Frug was, I think it came out brilliant and it, it had the essence of Bob and everyone thought that that was Bob's work, but it was really my work. And it was such a compliment that people got confused and said, yeah. but, but that's the original. And I went, well, no, but you know, I did one step. We did this, the boxing, boom, boom, da, 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 boom, boom. Yeah. That thing. And I did that on purpose because it was so identified and it was so like him and I wanted to put him in it. Yeah. Um, you know, I have such respect for him. And I think I have to say this, I think there's a little bit of a disservice about how people are approaching Bob's work because he loved dancers. And as much as it's very specific, he never really ripped, well, I have to say, ripped me apart. I looked at the work, I looked at his style, I did his work and I did his style. And whatever I was doing, he was fine with. So I think, I guess what I'm saying is, you have to start with the essence of who Bob Fosse was. You can't start with, okay, everyone stand there, turn your knee in. Put your shoulders back, pull your blades down, do your wrist. Now look a little bit over to your right. Look at your wrist, roll your fingers. No, that wasn't it. Roll it small, no, that wasn't it. How do you dance? You're not dancing. You're, you're kind of mimicking steps as opposed to what was he doing in that number? Right, like the, the story, story, the essence. Learned, I mean, dancing was special because dancing did a variety of stuff and different styles of Bob Fosse. It wasn't so pinpointed like a pinpoint, pointed like Pippin, and which right. became very identifiable and right. amazing and all the walks and all of that stuff, brilliant stuff. And then Big Deal was another whole nother thing. I mean, I was flying across that stage. Yes, I was specific. I was ba, ba, da. Yeah. I mean, I was sharp and precise and clean and isolated and I had an attitude and I knew what I was doing. And, you know, it was, it's a different approach. So uh, I don't know what I, well, I, I so, felt like that, it, that that was how wicked was because obviously like, you know, we had the champagne hands and there were certain right. things that were specific, right. but right. there was freedom in certain, like, you know, just like the way the scarecrow or just the sitting in the right. hip, how you would, you know, move right. that. And I just watched Corinne. That's all I would do. Uh, and then why not? I, mean, I just watched her and I tried to mimic her body. I was like, okay, she's going. Like, and she's, you know, yeah. yeah. And it's a beautiful, amazing. And you asked me about associates. So yeah. I've had a series of, of, of associates. And I worked with Tracy, Lang Tracy Langwin for a long time. She did, she did Tommy. She did a lot of the industrials that I did. 
And you kind of like, in a way, the choreographers, I kind of like grew out of that. And I wanted you, I, for me, I needed to keep moving forward in my progression. And so different people coming into my life gave me energy and I felt like there was another burst of freedom. And so, um, you know, Corinne, I met Corinne in Aida. Uh, I immediately fell in love with her and we hit it off. And then she started helping me in other stuff. She did Wicked, she did uh, Sweet Charity with me. She did um, other stuff. Um, and there was um, Aiko. Aiko was a little Japanese girl and Tommy. She was my assistant for a minute and she was from LA and I brought her to LA and I did uh, a TV special. I choreographed um, the 80th birthday of, um, uh, uh, oh God, not Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, and hmm. yeah, must be a lady. And I wow. did that special, I choreographed that for Paul Abdul and dancers. And then I did another piece of choreography for her for Jay Leno's show. So I brought Aiko in there because she had that, she had that and, LA vibe. And so, yeah. I mean, so, so you kind of like go with the flow and, and I'm an open person, but I'm an open person with my dancers. It, the auditioning process is fun and difficult and I see the people I wanna be with and the people that I inspire me. And so they come into my life, they're cast. And then when we're on the floor, it's about them. I'm building numbers about you, you, Christy, people individually. So a lot of my stuff is broken up. So it's kind of different people are doing different choreography at the same time and then eventually comes together. But uh, so your show very hard. <laughs> yeah, a, a dance captain, absolutely. And really? a swing, forget <laughs> it. Um, so, you know, but that's how I work. I play off of the people in the room. So, you know, it works that way when I'm in a room doing pre-production with my associate. We we're coming up with stuff, and I and I'm very prepared. I don't walk in a room without knowing exactly what I'm going to do. And then it's then all hell breaks loose when I get the company because then I throw shit out and new stuff comes in and but I know where I'm going. I know what the vocabulary is. Um, that person may do stuff a little bit different and maybe adding a different flavor to it. So I go, okay, let's do it that way for that person. You know, so I'm, I'm playing. I love well, that. What, what you said about auditioning for Bob, um, my story, my audition story was that um, so Corinne did the Wicked audition. I went to an open call yeah. and you were there, which, really? yeah. And uh, you came later and maybe this was like after a few cuts. But what I remember <laughs> is that you were like, at first you like, like the first cut happened and I think that was Corinne. And then we did, then we started doing the ballet and you like, you came in and you like pointed at me. You pointed and you were like, you take your shoes off. Let it it out. You're like, let the hair down. You and you just really? like, yeah. You're kidding. Oh my god. And, like, <laughs> and you you like did it. And you were like, you <laughs> take the shoes off. Let, it, let it all out. out. And you got yeah. that job. Yeah. yeah. And I and I just like I remember I was just such a, such a jazz dancer. And even though I did modern, but but I just remember being like, all right, fuck it. And oh, I <laughs> <laughs> Good. And it made oh. me dance with Corinne. Good. You oh, good. With her. And there you and go. About just the energy and with her. I, remember, the I blacked out. I blacked out. I remember I was like, I mean, I don't remember. I was like, okay, I have no clue what just happened. But see, I'm see, sure. see, that, see what I mean? Yeah. 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 It was an um, out of body experience. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but that, that was a moment that I'll never forget mm -hmm. because it's like you get, you saw something and you gave me a chance. You were like, uh -huh. you. Yeah. So that was yeah. cool. That was beautiful yeah. for me. I, you know, I, I, want, I want my auditions to be a party. I want everyone to come in and enjoy each other and have a great experience. And fuck if you get the job, if you don't get the job, it doesn't really matter. You walk out of there and you go, that was the best time ever. And I learned a lot. And if, if people go I out saying that I, I'm a happy person, I mean, because you know all the other stuff, Picking people gets so complicated. Um,
but it's not about for me. It's about, I want to have a party. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get back in shape so I can get back in there. Cause I'm not going to sit there on a chair and bang a stick. No, no. I, I didn't have that. And I didn't have that experience with you. I've only auditioned for you once, you know, for sweet charity, but I got to say, um, I do remember the room was filled with the most incredible dancers. I had flown from LA. I was staying with Alexis. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And I, and I, we did brass band and I just danced for my life and watched everybody out there and just thought I'm leaving it on the table and thought yeah. you're, I couldn't, I just had wonderful stories about, about you. So it's just an honor that you're here with us. We're going to, Okay. wrap this up really quickly but i want to um just show you this i think it's important people see this work um okay. so let me uh we only have two more questions that kind of tie together and then we'll we'll wrap it up because i know we're, we're taking a lot of your time but no no I, i'm thrilled to do this so fun well you're le- it's hard to get it all in waiting with you it's, it's brilliant uh, oh, wait. oh wow so wait let me go back this is wrong Dance steps up. Dance, 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 dance. There's Dream. Do you feel like your rush should it go? It's not just about doing dance steps, and they're not just a, a machine. It's my job as a director and a choreographer to tell a story through bodies, through a song and dance, and body language. <laughs> It's the most elegant new musical on Broadway. This With jazz great John Pizzarelli. Charlie, do you know Charlie from L.A.? He did, he did me in Charlie. He did me in the uh, Oh, Charlie, yes. I got him from him on the convention. Yes, yes. 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 And here's Aida. It's almost easy. This to, is my favorite. Um, I saw it opening to, night to with Chris Dupre in it in New York. I was going yeah. to Amp oh, and I saw it. Aida. The flow, um, the most beautiful show ever, I think. Do you believe I was not nominated for choreography on this? No, I can't no. believe that. No. Our friend Keisha Freeman did the national tour for you as well. Oh, yeah. Look, that was Corinne in there doing that yeah. East Indian. Yeah. Trio, yeah. Yeah. Social dancing was going on at that time. Amazing. Did another posse show, How to Succeed. Can we pause it, Chrissy? Yeah. How to Succeed, yeah. right. And uh, I use that in Poppy Brook. Um, Wayne, just because I, I we have yeah. the two questions, but just because we love Aida, like, did you uh, just have a blast doing that show? Like, what was, what was that show like doing? You know, that was like a dream because it was a dance company. I had the most incredible dancers in that in that whole experience. And if you if you know the show, it was a dance concert. There was yeah. you know there were was- that piece together, but it was a it was a it was a free for all for me. And it was like you know doing the men were strong in that uh, whatever the hell that path thing with all in black, and then the African yeah. stuff and the and the, and the uh, the uh, the sticks and the fighting and the Egyptians and the arrows and the, uh, you know, it was it was brilliant. It was a brilliant yeah. opportunity. Um, but but so like, and and this kind of leads into this question as we sort of move things along. What like what does now now? I mean, obviously, we were talking about this before we started, but like, what does Broadway mean to you and and the community that Broadway is? What does it mean to you? It's my home. It's it's how I. It's where I grew up. I mean, I you know, it um, from a person that did not know what to do with their life and kind of like tricked themselves into getting there. And once I got there, I felt comfortable. And it was always a fight. It wasn't anything that I, you know, just sat down and relaxed. And it was like I got into hit shows, and then I gave myself a period of time. And it was like, okay, I got to go and get out there, walk the street and get into another situation, get another show, choreograph something, do an industrial, do a commercial. I, it was constant. But I have to say I'm kind of lost with this whole pandemic and I'm getting choked up. Huh. Get that. It's such a detachment between my life I feel like I don't have a purpose and 
I just want to work. Yeah. I want to get more stuff out there. Um, yeah. That's. It's not really alone. Cool. Yeah. Not alone. Yeah. I know we're all in this together. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe so I want. Yeah. Well, I was saying maybe just, it's time for us to create our our own new version of what a chorus line is. Like maybe maybe it's time for. I can't believe you're saying this. I just had the conversation with like Tyler. A, a continuation of what the generation yeah. is going through now. Yeah, yeah like this generation. Yeah. And and you direct and choreograph it, Wayne. Like it's well, you it, know, a car line is a very difficult thing to reconstruct because I like I said, we were young, we were fresh, it was us. I mean, I think they need to approach it in a different way. They have to let you dance the way you dance because when you're in an audition, you dance like oh, you would yeah. dance in an audition. And that's yeah. not everyone dancing perfectly. So yeah. it's individuals. So you yeah. start off with that premise. If you don't start off with that premise and you get to know these people through the course of the evening, and then once you get to one and everyone's dancing like a machine, that's the irony of that show. That's the heartbreaking yeah. part of that show. Yeah. If you don't do that journey, you did nothing. You know, and everyone, so why do you have to stand exactly like Mike Costa? I mean, he's had an attitude. I was from the Bronx. I had an attitude. I was a wise guy. So just play that and shit in your pen. And you'll be brilliant. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They had to just go for the people that were on the line. <laughs> so just so pissing, have, it just pissing me off. But, you know, you all did a great job. Do you have any advice for young performers now? Did what? Like, do you have any advice for young performers and, and aspiring yeah. theater dancers, choreographers? What's your advice? Uh, you know, choreography is a journey and it, I just felt like um, I never really did uh, like uh, show off glamorous moments to, to um, feature myself as a choreographer. It always in the, in my work, I mean, yes, there were big dance sections, and but I tricked it into the atmosphere, the uh, environment, what people were doing, who people were, and breaking it down individually and staging everything, and then eventually coming together as a unit and doing something as a as as a whole. Um, Wicked was very difficult because Wicked, I had to learn a lesson. I was doing individual individual choreography for everyone. And like you said, it was disjointed choreography for the Scarecrow stuff. And um, that all kind of went away when we came back from San Francisco, but it was incorporated a little bit, some of the style. But I had to get to the place where, you know when all the girls get picked up and do the leg in right. uh, in the courtyard? Yeah. Right before we get to the, uh, the uh, Ozdust. Yeah. I had to do, I had to stop for a second and let everyone like the four couples yeah let the guys pick them up everyone go up in the air you know and it was like okay I'm, I give in I got to do it because it was so complicated to watch individuals all the time doing different stuff yeah that I had to make it come together yeah. and so I had to find moments where you know that guy yeah, that thing would yeah. jump in the air. Yeah, you know, it ha everyone had to come together. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was it's everything is different. Um, I just think, as a choreographer today, I mean, I think it's it's rough because you got to follow the through line, the story. You gotta you gotta you know uh, collaborate with the director and get inside his head. Joe and I were like one person. I mean, it was maybe the easiest collaboration I ever did because wow. he's so smart and is he's so tasteful and he and he's on the nose. But it was interesting because from the beginning, I knew I had to throw up and put it on the floor first. <laughs> and then he would comment and stop me and go, that's amazing, but could you do this over there? Could you do that? And then we started getting a language together. Wow. And I knew, I knew what his process was. He needed to see it. And then he would, he would comment on it. I would fix it. We would do it together. And then we move on to the next thing. It wow. was really refreshing because 
once I gave into that, it was like, okay, I'm going to just do it. Wow. Who is this again? Who is Joe? What's it? Just so people know. Joe. Mentello. Yeah, Mantello. Mantello for um, Wicked. 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 It is brilliant. He is brilliant. So um, would you say, sorry, go ahead, Wayne. Go. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think performers need to know how to do it all. I mean, it's not about, you know, just go in there and show me your technique. It's about, okay, I got a shitload of technique. I'm going to walk in that room and I'm going to do exactly what the choreographer is putting out there. And the technique will come through, but you can't go, I'm beautiful. I'm going to do great lines and I'm going to do a preparation and do five pirouettes. I don't care. I really don't care. If you do, you know, if, it, if your leg goes over your head and it's spectacular, do it, but make it come from somewhere. Just don't throw your leg up yeah. in the air. Yeah. So you have to you have to merge all of the all of the elements: the singing, the acting, the dancing yeah. together. If you're a singer first, if you're a dancer first, you got to learn how to sing or fake it until you get there, or whatever you have to do. <laughs> be be a unit, be an entity, because there's no room to just do the singers and the dancers. The dancers have to sing. The singers have to dance. Oh my God, this just made me think. We have one last question, but- well, Two more, two more. Two more, okay. Um, uh, you gave me really good advice. I had, I did a major F up in a rehearsal in Sweet Charity. Um, I had to jump in for Corinne so she could watch. And I screwed, I like, I was all over the place. It, it just didn't go well. Were you trying to do Corinne? Yeah, I had to do Corinne's track for some designer run or something. and. It wasn't that I wasn't on my shit, but I think I got so nervous. I just, right. I was so nervous. It was the first time I had danced. And anyway, you got mad at me. Like you were on yeah. me. You can't do that. It's a safety thing. Like you have to know your shit. And then you came to me afterwards with Corinne and you were like, look, you're not going to make it as a swing in the show unless you start connecting the dots of the story for each person. Yeah. And I remember that changed how I, how I swung the show and it became- really? Remember, you know that you were like, you can't just think of it as like, I go to this number yeah. and I'm on yeah. this count because you're gonna go. You were like, you're gonna go fucking crazy. Yeah. 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 You have to figure out why Joyce goes this way here. Does she want to talk like you? She, you that's were like, right. you story right. for everybody, and then you're yeah. gonna be singing. Did and that and that started connecting for you. You started and putting started the for me, and I was on my shit the rest of the time. Well, I but I have to tell you, being a swing is maybe the hardest job ever. It is. It's, it's thankless, but, but it's you become so much better. You walk out of that show and you go, I'm on my gig. I, I didn't even know what a swing I, was. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah. was like, what is that? I'll take the job. I'll take it. It's Fosse. It's a swing. I'll do it. Exactly. Yeah. I got it. I'll do I got it. it. Just say yes. Anyway. Um, okay. We have two last have questions. One, two last questions. You'll take the last one, Les. Lex. Okay. Um, just that just now as your passion, like as we look over your span, if we just spoke, talked about your life and your contribution to the arts, Wayne, like it's so amazing. Thank you so much. You've touched so many dancers lives. It, you know, my mom always taught me that it was um, to pay it forward, to pass it on. And so I guess we just want to ask you now, as you look at your life, what does passing it on mean to you right now? I'm doing exactly what I'm doing right now with you guys. Yeah. Instead of keeping it my secret, just expressing it and let people learn from me and that kind yeah. of stuff. It makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm ready and I'm ready to give, you know, even when I'm doing nothing, I'm ready to like. Well, we me. feel it. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's hard doing virtual classes. I'm a person that gets in there and I want to be with bodies and, yeah. You know, I'm old bodies and I want to, I want everyone to see my passion and, you yeah. know, and being motivated and, you know, go on with that, you know, so it's, I, I give you guys props for doing what you do. Well, we, we, are, we don't want to keep, we want to keep the flow going. We want to keep people staying inspired because the arts is not going to die. Stories aren't going to die. We're just right. in a very challenging moment. And yeah. like yeah. this, Wayne, yeah. so amazing because it, it will, this will inspire someone and people have been watching and you know, Tyler's been, Tyler's been saying a bunch of comments. <laughs> but you um, never, this is gonna go forever. <laughs> but what? this is what's gonna, this is what's gonna go on forever. Yeah. 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 This, well, this interview will live on even for like 50 years from now, somebody's gonna see this and be like, oh my gosh, this man, and I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole of this man and his legacy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Lex, you want, I'm pulling it up right now, Lex. So our last, our last question for you is if you yeah. could, if you could give, think back to this younger, your younger self, if you could say, what would you say to this younger version, this, this young Wayne now having lived your life? I would have never expected this to go full circle with us. Um, she was just a flirtation and it was the beginning of me kind of recognizing the possibilities of what I could do and it kind of triggered something. And for some reason, even though I went to junior college for something else, it haunted me until I, I needed to get to a dance environment. And when I got to Brockport, I tell you, I danced from seven o'clock in the morning until nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I was a modern dancer. Uh, I studied a lot of stuff and I made up my own curriculum so I could just stay in the class. And that's what I did. I just danced for two years. I killed myself. What would and you say to my, what would you say to the, what would you say to him right now? If you could, you could go back in time at 17 years old. What would you say to him? I would say you should have started a little bit sooner so you could have learned some more technique, more tricks. And I became, <laughs> I became a really pretty good ballet dancer in a way. I couldn't do tricks. I can't do tricks. But Nanette Fabre, do you know her? I don't. Nanette? She was a ballet teacher and she taught at Harkness and she taught for Lee Theodore in Dance Machine. Oh, wow. Uh, and she got me flying. I flew. Um, and I and I really like let it go and uh, and I have really good line and stuff like that I think instant instinctually but uh, if I had my druthers I wish I was a little bit more trained in trick stuff. Marsha Milgram Dodge said, "I would have said, do you know Marsha at all?" Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I would have told her more ballet, more ballet. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my god! Really? No, I got the ballet in there. I did squeeze it in, but yeah, so. Yeah. Well, Wayne, thank you so much for this. You gave us an hour and 20 minutes of your time and more because we were on beforehand. Like truly, you're a very generous human being and your passion you. exudes through the screen. It thank does. You. And it did in our class too. It really did. Everybody right. went. Thank you for teaching. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it to the both of you. Whenever you need me, just give me a call. Thanks. Well, let's Thanks just get back out. to the studio. Let's just get back. Yes. Let's get back to the studio. Yeah, let's, absolutely. Let's yeah. get into Tyler. All right. I will. All right. Thanks, well, thank you. We love you so much. Right. And, thank uh, you. Thank you so much. This was okay. amazing. Yeah. We love you. Love you. Bye. You, Bye. Can press, you can press leave studio and, and <laughs> <laughs> okay. tell me how to do it. I'm gonna go tell now. Kathy, tell love Kathy you. to hello too. Tell Kathy. I will. To Thanks, Chrissy. Thanks for all your help. Get me on this thing. Of course. Right, bye. Bye, bye. bye, Wayne. Bye. Bye, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in for this long interview. We hope you um, enjoy it. And for those of you who aren't watching live, bye. yeah, write write your comments, share it with people because this is this is truly the legacy passing on and and how we build community. So click subscribe, share, and and keep it. <laughs>